Hello everyone, um, Jacques from Dapper Shave. So as I said, um, some videos about um, restoring and, and, and fixing and refreshing um, customer razors. In my previous video, you would have seen this um, uh, backpipe razor. Um, this is not its original box. Um, and I'm gonna try and find a way just to see if we can't maybe with super glue just reinforce this box just to make it look a bit better. So we'll that's uh, something we will get to that out the way. So um, what do you need to do these tasks? So as a start. Um, as little tools as possible. You don't want something that's gonna cost you a fortune to get done, especially if it's a task you only intend of doing once or twice. I have over the years um, used some of um, the profit to buy myself some tools to speed up the process a bit, but fundamentally it's down to the bare basics. So, um, stuff like wet dry sandpaper um, you'll use a lot my philosophy is the finer um, the better um, the coarser the stuff obviously the more um, work you've got to do afterwards and some situations call for core stuff um, others don't so take one opportunity at a time so this is fundamentally one of the first things I started um, using um, when I started. So if we look at this razor, um, again, um, there's some, some rasp spots on the blade face. Um, and there's some um, rasp spots here on the spine. Okay, and also on the back of the blade. And there's um, in the bottom jumping, um, it's quite black, so we'll, we'll, um, we'll clean that up and there is some rust there. So that's what we're going to tackle. So um, I'm first going to start with the spine, with the easy stuff, the size stuff. Oh, by the way, um, I have some of these around um, when I work with, with sharp blades I never cut myself when I work with stuff that needs attention or work there's always little mishaps so I have them around um, stuff like metal polish we'll we'll talk about this but later on um, yes steel wool this is double zero double zero extremely fine this is my safe go to starting point for uh, for most things uh, having said that, um, what we've got here on the spine, um, you, if you feel your finger on there, it's, it's, it's roughy, so that's going to require a bit more work. So we're going to um, use the sandpaper, then move on there, do some polishing and so forth. So with the razor closed, so you are quite safe from the blade edge, I'm going to take in a piece of... Um, Uh, sandpaper and we are just going to um, carefully and without pressure just lightly start working the spine by hand be careful pressure is not your friend here And you'll keep going until you've got um, those spots um, missing or gone. So deep rust will leave a pit. You won't get that out unless you remove significant amounts of um, of, uh, of material. So um, yeah, just 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 remember that. This is just surface rush, so we do this by hand. 
Um, when you get more comfortable or you've got um, a vice or other tool you can use for this, clamp down the razor. And there's some gunk now here on the back. Maybe plaster. Um, Doesn't matter. So I'm going to, at some point in time, speed up the video because you don't want to see all this boring stuff. Um, be precise in what you do, have control, don't use pressure. Um, try not to work freehand the way I do. Slip of the hand here, lack of concentration, and um, you are going to not be a happy camper. So Jock, why do you do it freehand? Why don't you go and buy a vice? Well, I could. Um, the idea is not to spend money, guys. Um, and I'll show you. I have got one of the tools I invested in is a Dremel. And this is a remote one. You get all kinds of abrasive and wheels and stuff you can put on there. Um, but only start using tools, power tools, when you're well experienced and stuff. Um, and you know what the results are going to be. Because um, there's no undo button um, with these things. Okay. Um, so if it's done, it's done. So you... You, you sand the easy areas, work the spine first, get the areas off, um, and we'll get to the blade face last. So let me quickly show you how I handle um, jumps. So typically, um, when I started, I would buy brushes. This is now just a nylon one, but you get them in copper and, and wire brushes as well, cheap. And you buy one like that, and um, and you clean out the jumps. So that's time consuming, and it takes effort, and so on. So for the Dremel, you get all kinds of wheels. Um, yes, a lot of them, that's, this one's already had many thousand, <laughs> many miles on it. That's about to be discarded. That's a normal wire brush. This one's got a bit more of a abrasive particle in and they're actually quite larger. These are both well worked. So let's quickly give one a go and see how uh, that uh, works out. Right, so the bit's in and it's locked um, and the Dremel is... Um, is on this counter uh, rotates um, counterclockwise so take particularly notice of that in the direction you use so um, let's get going So this is the tank. By the way, very dangerous to do what I did there with a spinning thing on a piece of cloth. This can get ripped off and be all over the place. Um, but in any case, so you can immediately see um, just that bit of work, what, what, what the difference is on the tank. So um, let me quickly show you um, the net result on the jumps.
big difference there. So I'm going to tackle some of the deeper spots here uh, on this side. I off on the spine, I'll stay away um, from the edge area and um, we'll see how that goes. So up next is this little mark here. Um, so let's see how it goes. So obviously um, this has got a bit of abrasive in. So you can see um, the marking it lo uh, leaves there, the scratches, but we're gonna polish that out. And you'll see that um, that mark is looking a whole lot better. Okay, so remember, um, rusting causes the metal to stain. We call that patina. Um, and the more aggressive uh, the rust was, or the deeper it was, the bigger um, metal would have eroded, leaving a, a little a crater, or what we call a pit. So to get rid of that, you need to take off a lot of material. So find a balance of what works best. This is a polishing wheel, so I just want to quickly show you the results of um, just buffing that up quickly. So I like to keep my fingers um, very close to the working area. Um, all these tools um, causes heat and you want to control the heat. Um, a lot of the guys work with um, thick leather gloves obviously for protection purposes. Um, but if you're not on the game, um, you can very easily um, overheat the blade. Um, and what happens is the, um, the heat spreads very, very quickly and it goes to the thin area very quickly and if you blow the temper on the edge you can throw the, the, the razor away. So um, that's a bit of buffing. Um, guys this is not a finished job, I'm just showing you um, areas, um, otherwise it's going to be a very long process. Um, metal polish, um, put it on there, I like using my finger. Um, You can uh, just buff it up. Now you can use, once again, a wheel or something on a, on a Dremel, or you can um, do it the old fashioned way. And the old fashioned way is a lot of the times the more rewarding one, uh, the heavy lifting, if there's any heavy lifting, I use some of the tools, otherwise um, it's an opportunity for me to um, spend time with a razor. So there we go. Um, the mark's still there because it's a deep crater, but it's not black anymore. Um, 
it's nice and polished um, and that's what we'll do with the entire blade um, the tricky area and that's going to be a, a next video is going to be getting in here because there's two ways of doing this very fine manual manual task getting in there with brushes and sandpaper and all kinds of other things or you unpin the pivot, you take the blade out, it's a loose blade, you polish and do everything what you need to do with the blade, put it back and repin it. There's always a downside that things um, won't work out the way you want it to work out, so um, that's always a consideration. I try not to unpin a razor if I don't need to. Um, this thing's got um, an inlay, I think it's typically brass or copper or something. This one doesn't look bad, um, but they can um, become that green stain you get from brass or copper. Um, the double zero double zero sandpaper. Guys, this thing just pretty much... <coughs> polishes hmm? you can also um, your polishing what you use for the metal after all this is metal there we go um, so I'm going to stop this video and then I'm going to work um, offline and then we'll come back and look at the results and talk about some challenging areas if there were any. So we're back with a Famex backpiper. So um, nice and clean. Yeah. Um, spine at the bottom jumps nice and clean there we go this is the problem area we had on the back of the spine So some of the spots um, I've left there, um, they marks very faintly in the form of patina and a slight crater. But fundamentally um, a different beast, isn't it? This is still loose, so I'm going to pin that next. You're going to require a, a ball and hammer, okay, like this. And uh, people spend fortune buying anvils. This is an old mason's chisel. I still use it from time to time to take out rock. I'm looking for owning mediums. But this is my anvil. It's got a 1.6 mil hole drilled in there, one mil deep. So that's what I use when I set brand new um, brand new um, uh, pins so um, I hold the hammer this is a 225 gram hammer I don't know how many ounces it's I put my finger behind it that's how I hit additionally I keep my finger um, at a point where the, the ball is going to hit the pin Okay, so that's a little safety mechanism that I don't drift, hit and damage the scales. Now, I'm not sure if you can see, but it seems that there's a hairline crack. It's not on the pivot. Uh, so I'm going to be very careful when I, when I tap this. Um, right, so here goes.
So the blade's um, still loose, so I'm gonna turn it and we're gonna hit the other side so it's symmetrical. Once again, this is um, this is pressure is not your friend. So um, the blades now um, the way I like it. I'm just gonna open it all the way. There we go. Bring it back. And it centers quite nicely. So I'm happy with that. Quickly talk about pinning uh, briefly more. So this is a, a brass rod and this is a cap. Okay, and what you do is um, goes through there. You've got a cap on each side, and as you hammer the top, it mushrooms, it flattens, it compresses this together, and that's what keeps your blade um, in place. So that's the the mechanism of pinning with um, with a brass rod and caps, and then. Um, on my own razors, with the razors I rescale, I add in internal brass washers additionally. I just like that. Um, so, uh, look, your razor has been uh, refurbished. Pinned up next is honing and then a test shave. 